Hello everyone, this is Red from Red Stir Dimension Gaming, and today I will be reviewing The Witch and the Hundred Knight Revival Edition for the PlayStation 4. So back in 2014, The Witch and the Hundred Knight had hit retail, and it was one ugly game. NIS America has now taken more time to add detail, textures, lighting, and new models to Metallia's Swamplands. The Witch and the Hundred Knight Revival Edition is in no means perfect, but it tells a great story and has unique characters. Trapped within her own swamp and never being able to go beyond the borders of it, the Swamp Witch Metallia creates a contract with the tiny but adorable Hundred Knight. He must do anything that the brash witch Metallia commands. Exploring the different areas of the world, you must destroy the mighty pillars and the guardians that protect them. Making these pillars bloom allows Metallia to see the outside world and grow more powerful. Is this all there is to the story of Metallia and her mighty hundred knight? While well, there is also an additional story to be found by exploring the lands. You will also find that there are far worse and more treacherous witches than Metallia. If Metallia's horrible personality or wickedness is too much for you to handle, and the southern part of the Swampland is the Tower of Illusion. In this tower, you will meet Leah, a friendlier version of Metallia. Once you are so far in the story, you can unlock another 10 levels of this tower and slowly climb your way to the top of it and grant Leah's wishes. This area is brand new and allows you to level up very easily. In order to use this tower, you must sacrifice one of your weapons to use it. The reward is far better than the loss. Alchemy is also a nice feature in this game. You can use Catalyst from the Tower of Illusion to increase your weapons and equipment's attack, defense, and much more. Another awesome feature is the ability to summon not only your current summons, but also Natalia as well. She is a great companion to use on the battle. With all these great improvements, the game still suffers from the same problem the original game had. One being the tutorial, or better yet, lack of tutorials. The beginning tutorial introduces a player to the game, but quickly you will find yourself alone and afraid. For example, I didn't know how to use items in the game until several hours after playing and failing. To use items, one cannot simply just go into the item menu and use it. Yes, you heard that right. Instead, you have to tap on the touchpad, and it's not explained at all, and press the X button on the item you want to use. There is also a lack of direction when it comes to traversing the lands in the Witch in the Hundred Knight Revival. Way too often I came across an area where I did not know what it was that I was supposed to do in order to advance. This would be all fine and dandy if it was on a harder difficulty. But for someone that wants to play on normal or casual mode, there needs to be a guidance system in place. What style of game is this? The gameplay style is a hack and slash RPG. There's plenty to do while exploring, such as plundering, conquering towns, or simply just beating up the local townsfolk. The Witch and the Hundred Knight Revival Edition's battle system is easy to grasp and using magic and abilities is one of the aspects of the game that is explained well. This along with Metallia's humorous and bullish remarks are the best parts about the game. Also boss fights are actually quite easy compared to other games created by NIS America. One final complaint about the gameplay is the timing system. Back when NIS America was in charge of the developer, Gust. They always had these horrible timing systems in the Adelaide series. Please take these type of systems out of your game. There are moments in the game when the timing meter will just start going down faster than usual. And I'm not bad at the game, it's just that I wanted to try to 100% all the maps and still receive the maximum amount of rewards for completing the area. The time can be managed if you consume the enemy, but then once you consume an enemy, you're punished by making your stomach consume trash in return. So you can't pick up certain weapons and other items that you find when you're exploring. Because if your stomach gets too full, then you can't put any more in it. Or if you consume too much trash, you can't even manipulate the time system at all. So it's a failed system altogether. And this is incredibly frustrating. 
if I were to remake this game, I would completely remove the time system and the stomach system. Also, I would make it that you could use any item in your inventory or stomach at any time. Why can I only use the touchpad to access these items? Anytime I try to access them outside of it, it won't let me use them. So, what's the point in even having a menu item system if you can't use any of the items in the menu? As said in my introduction, the graphics have been greatly improved. One of the things that drove me away from the original game was the graphics. Nippon Itchy Software and NIS America has added new textures, and lighting effects, and recreated models to create a more surreal experience. Although they aren't perfect, they outshine their original game graphics by a mile. Overall, the Witch in the Hundred Night Revival Edition is still not perfect, but a lot more playable than the original. It has a funny and entertaining storyline, along with a great scary protagonist. Evil works in both the gameplay and story, and it will haunt you in some ways too. This is not for your average RPG player. I could see a lot of people rage quitting just wanting to give up already. Like, what's the point? And just get rid of the game. A message to NIS, please fix some of these complaints that I have and a lot of the community has so that it's easier for us to play. If it's not easier to play, some people don't have the patience and the time for that, and they might give up. Overall, I give the game a 7 out of 10. It's a better game than the original, but it's still hard to manage all the imperfections. If you'd like to buy the game and also help support my channel, don't forget to use the Amazon link below. If you'd like to read the full written review, use the link to go to my blog, and I will have a ton of gameplay videos up for this game. Thank you guys for watching. See ya. Ow, ow, ow. Still, this pain, I recognize it somehow. Maybe you should lie down. Shut up! Don't come near me! Should you really act tough right now? This is no normal stomach ache. This isn't the green spot plague, is it? Green spot plague? It is a plague that begins with a stomach ache, and as it progresses, spotty bruises spread all over and you die. I already knew that! This pain is different. I... I know this pain. This might be... Lord Peptobiz. Oh, I see. Lord Peptobiz. It has been quite a long time since I heard that name. It hasn't been here in ages, so I thought it went somewhere really far away. Lord Peptobiz? Who's that? I don't get it, but... Are you okay? Lord Peptobiz is a god that appears out of the forest depths whenever Master Leah does something bad. Symptoms include a circus of stomach aches, headaches, back aches, dizziness, diarrhea, pain, suffering, and vomiting. Scary, you know. <laughs> That's an old fairy tale people told to get their kids to behave. <laughs> Natalia, you believe that old superstition? Superstition? Honestly, we ignore your usual behavior. You have a really cute side too, huh? This is why ignorant dogs. Damn heads out high. Lord Peptobis was written in Greek Witch Urtica's Witch Doctrine. Which specific book that... Okay, okay, I get it. Don't speak. Save your strength. I shouldn't have laughed at you. But still, can't you use your magic or something to create an antidote for your stomach ache? Hepzobiz or whatever aside, isn't this a chance to show off how amazing your magic is? This is stupid. Trying to get us all killed? Not calling it Lord 